Hi, fourth graders. We're going to work on line plots. And the first lesson is something that I want you to understand that you haven't practiced it yet in fourth grade, but it's a very important skill. It's not going away. You are going to have to be doing this in fifth grade and in sixth grade and so forth and so on. So if you can master this skill now, it's going to make your life with line plots so much easier in years to come. So don't just breeze through this. Pay close attention. There's a couple details that I want you to pay attention to because they are common mistakes with line plots. When you're looking at line plots, a lot of times you need to look at it as the amount of people you're asking of. So you might be doing a line plot of the amount of people that are attend a baseball game or the amount of people that are going to be cooking in a cooking show or the amount of people that you're wanting to hand out a survey to. And that's what you're plotting are the amounts of people, not necessarily the results. And in this situation, we have Howard who is decided to give out a survey to several of his friends and he wants to figure out the amount of time it took his friends to fill out the survey. And if we take a look at the information, up here are the amounts of times. So one person turned it in and it took him um, one twelfth of an hour. Another person handed it in, it took them three twelfths of an hour. A different person handed it in, it also took them one twelfth of an hour. You take all of this information and step one, you need to put all of this information in order from least to greatest. So you put the smallest fraction first. Now if you notice that on this piece of paper that a couple of these have been listed more than one. So I can circle like the 112th and the 112th, it's been listed twice. Well, you are going to be sure that you list it twice on your document when you're listing it, um, listing them in order. Okay, don't forget that step. Make sure you include every one of them. And if it's more than one, include it. Then you're gonna start tallying how many took this time. Now you can look at these tallies as people's names if it helps you. So for an example, this first tally person right there, that could be Bob. Okay, and then that second per second tally mark, you could change it and it could be somebody else. Like this one right here, this could be Sally. Then you could do another one, this one could be Dave. Could do another one like right here. That one could be Eric. And you could do another one and go, okay, well, that person right there is going to be Kevin. And oh, I think this person right here is going to be Janice. And then, okay, this person right here is going to be Aaron. Okay. You don't have to put people's names next to it. But what I'm trying to help you understand is that each of those tally marks are a person. And that's what you're trying to represent. After you have put them in order, you are going to put tally marks next to them. Your whole objective, as you can recall, was to put it in a line plot. And what exactly is a line plot? Well, a line plot is when you are going to put your information smallest to greatest on a line. So again, down here, we have a line plot. They put the number smallest to greatest. Then each of the tally marks represents an X. So do you see how there's two tally marks up here? Well, that's why there's two X's down here. There's one tally mark here on two twelfths. Well, they just put one X down here for two twelfths. So each tally mark is represented down below. Then, as you work through it, you're trying to figure out some questions. So, they want to know how many data points are greater than two twelfths. Well, once again, if you look at it, here is two twelfths. So, they want to know how many are greater one, two, three, four. And that's how they came up with four data points. Four are greater. Well, let's go down below and let's see what other types of questions they might want to ask us about this plot. How many of the surveys did Howard give his friends to answer? Well, once again, remember I was putting names with everybody. We want to count how many people were asked the survey. Well, if I count through the tally marks, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven people who were asked the question. 
So I am going to put that right here. I have seven. But again, it's not just that. You need to include a label. How many of the surveys did he give his friends the answer? So seven, how many of the surveys? Seven surveys. Okay. Then number two, what is the difference in hours between the longest time and the shortest time? What does difference mean? If you said subtraction, you are correct. You are taking your largest amount, which is 6 twelfths, and you are wanting to subtract it from the smallest amount, which is 1 twelfth. Now, as you can recall, when you are dealing with fractions, if the denominators are the same, you can subtract them. So you keep the denominator the same with 6 minus 1, 5. That is your answer right here. But don't forget your label. Howard's friends, they want to know what the difference in hours. So 5 12 is the difference. And that's what you would write for number two. Okay. Now let's move on. Let's take a look at what the other page would possibly look like that you have to do with line plots because there is a second page with it. With the second page, it says, for an example, number one, the line plot shows the distance of some students who jogged. Again, each of these represent a student. So again, I could go through and I could name these. I could go, okay, there's Amy, there's Rachel, there's Aaron, there's Tiffany, there's Kirsten, there's Levi, and I can go through and I can name all of these people. Well, that's great, but then they want to know how many of them jogged the three fifths. Okay, that's a little bit different. It would only be these people right here. Well, how many of those are there? How many X's do you see? You see four, so you know that the answer is A. Also, I want to show you this last question because on your Google Doc, it looks a little bit confusing, okay? The tally table shows how many times students would spend walking home from school if they did not ride the bus. Use the tally table to complete the line. Well, first of all, how many fractions do you see here? Four. How many lines do you see here? Four. That means you have to list these fractions from least to greatest, and then you are going to go ahead and place X's here. Is that something that's possible for tallies and doing making this chart? Probably not. So is this something you're going to be able to do very well on the Google Doc? Probably not. And we understand that. Okay? If you're doing it on a worksheet, please do this because it definitely is doable. Okay? Thank you.